Good afternoon, everyone. My name is David Higdon, and I'm with NASCAR's Integrated Marketing Communications team. Welcome to Championship 4 Media Day here at the beautiful Diplomat Resort and Spa in Hollywood, California. Before we hear from our Championship 4 drivers, I'd like to welcome our many fans watching live on NASCAR.com and listening on Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope you enjoy the program. In less than 24 hours, NASCAR Sprint Cup Series cars will hit the track at Homestead Miami Speedway, preparing for another thrilling championship race, the Ford EcoBoost 400, live on NBC, MRN, and Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. In addition to these viewing and listening options, NBC announced this week the launch of NBCSN Hot Pass, a multi-window display and track map that gives fans an in-depth look at our championship four drivers during Sunday's race. This option is another in a long line of innovations that NBC has offered in their return to NASCAR coverage. We certainly thank them and congratulate them on an incredible 2015 season. Our championship four drivers survived another challenging chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup and have earned the right to compete for one of the toughest title in all of sports, the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series Championship. And today we hear from them each. Our drivers are indeed here and they are ready. Ladies and gentlemen, the championship four drivers. Hello, guys. To my left, he's the defending NASCAR Sprint Cup Series champion and driver of the number four Budweiser, Jimmy John Chevrolet, Kevin Harvick. The four-time series champion who will compete in his final race on Sunday, the driver of the number 24 Exalta Chevrolet, Jeff Gordon. After returning from injury, he reeled off four wins in five races the driver of the number 18 M&M's Crispy Toyota, Kyle Busch, and hailing from New Jersey while driving for a team headquartered in Denver, the driver of the number 78 Furniture Row, Denver Mattress Chevrolet, Martin Truex Jr. We'll get right to your questions from the media for our championship contenders. If you have a question, please raise your hand and state your name and affiliation when called upon. We have Mike Runners, Don, and Andrew in the back who will get you uh, a microphone. So we will start with Mr. George Diaz, and we'll go to Tom Jensen, and then over to Jeff Gluck. Yeah, George Diaz, Rolando Sentinel over here, right in front of you, Kevin. Um, being the defendant champion, does that do a thing for you coming into this weekend? Does anything translate? Well, I think so. I think, you know, for. Me personally, I, I think that just the, the management of, of the week and, you know, just all the logistics of everything that happens and, and knowing what to expect is, is definitely a good thing because in the end, it's, it's not just another week. It's, it's championship week and there's a, there's a lot on the line and, and I feel like, um, you know, managing those emotions and logistics uh, from, from everybody at, at Stuart Haas who's had experience winning the championship and, and you know, everybody in our office, uh, you know, that they got to go through that last year is, you know, there can be a lot of distractions. So uh, managing your time and, and doing the things that you need to do are, are definitely, um, you know, a positive and, and keeping the right frame of mind and, and staying focused on, on the things that you need to stay focused on. And for me, that's pretty simple this week, and that's to drive the car and, and, and try to get the most out of it. So, you know, I think it's definitely good that we got to go through that last year. Hi, Tom Jensen, FoxSports.com for Jeff. Jeff, has it sunk in yet that this is going to be your last race? And, and what are your emotions going into the weekend? No, not quite yet. Uh, I mean, my emotions uh, right now are just focused on on the race. And you know, we we've been doing so much pre-planning for this this weekend, having friends and family here, just because we expected it, knew it was going to be our uh, my final race, but. Certainly, things have ramped up a bit since uh, since Martinsville, and 
It was nice being able to win that first race of that round because it did give you a little bit more time to, to make some plans um, around here to stay focused, uh, you know, and, and, and I had to make some adjustments, uh, you know, because of some of the things that we did have planned. But, I mean, I'm just excited. The team is extremely fired up, you know, being in the shop this week with them. Uh, you know, yesterday it was really, really exciting. So, yeah, it, it, I think still the focus is on that. But, uh, you know, there's times when I get on Twitter or, or I, I see uh, uh, something, you know, like uh, the ESPN thing where, that Jimmy did, and it starts to, 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 to definitely get you a little choked up, and, and that's, uh, that's only a good thing. I'm excited, you know, about this uh, season winding down the way it has and the career, and uh, it makes you feel good when you hear some of those things that are out there. Okay, we'll go to Jeff, and then over to Bob, and then over to Jordan. Jeff Clark from USA Today. Guys, we've heard a lot about driver codes and racing hard and, and what's the right thing to do this year, um, especially in the chase. If there's a late restart or, or battle for the lead among you four, where's the line and does anything go at that point? <laughs> I, I think for me, honestly, it's uh it doesn't really change from the way I've raced my whole career and the way I've raced every week. Um, you know, if it co comes down to, you know, a little bit of pushing and shoving at the end for the win, then, you know, it just depends on, um, you know, what I feel like the other guys are, are willing to put on the line. I think that, uh, I don't think anyone's just going to go out there and, and wreck someone uh, to try to get the championship. At least that's not the way I would do it. So uh, for me, it really doesn't change from the way I race every week. We're going to put it to, uh, you know, our best effort out there on the racetrack. We're going to race as hard as we can, and, and hopefully uh, we don't have to worry about crossing that line. Anyone else you guys want to add to that? You good? <laughs> All right, Martin speaks for the group. Wait your turn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't have to worry about racing these guys next year. But <laughs> Yeah, state your affiliation, <laughs> name and affiliation. Um, yeah, yeah I, I think you have to be in a competitive environment like we are. I, I think it also depends on, on you know, your interaction with those drivers. Uh, I mean, I, I don't think that any of us currently have any beefs among one another, but, and, and we have a lot of respect for one another, and you want to go out there. I mean, the ultimate is that you're running second, and you have to pass one of these guys on the final lap, and it's some – bold and exciting move but a clean move uh, or maybe you know just a little fender rub or something like that that gets you the win I mean to me that's the ultimate that's that's how everybody wishes and hopes that they can do it you know if, if you put the, the the bumper to them and they spin they crash even if you cross the line first th that's going to weigh on you a little bit yeah you might be the champion but it's still going to be have sort of a, a shadow over it so I think, you know, if you ask us right now what we'd be willing to do, it's we want to go do it in a clean way. But um, you don't know how you're going to react on that last lap when you, when you have it in sight and, 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 and you don't know what's going to go on throughout the whole race that may create, um, you know, an opportunity. All right, we'll go over to Bob and then to I Jordan. I think there's one more. I think as you, as go, you, sorry. you know, going through this last year, you know, all four of us raced against each other pretty much the whole race. And, you know, everybody raced hard and, and, and did everything that they wanted to do as far as uh, pass each other and, and race. Because in the end, I mean, you know, if it's the last lap, I mean, what are the odds of it, of it coming down to that? I mean, you have to, you have to get to that point and, and how you race each other all day. We raced hard, but in the end, it was, it was clean and, and uh, you know, everybody did what they had to do. So I wouldn't be surprised if it, it was the same way this year where you have to race up front and, and race for a win and, and do all the things that happened last year. But that, that already happened last year, and, and you saw how it went. Anything to add, Kyle? You're good? He's grumpy today. <laughs> all right, we'll go over to Bob and then Jordan and then uh, the gentleman in the back. Uh, Bob Hocker, CSPN, uh, for all of you, Threat of rain on Sunday, are you okay with the rules as they are that you could have a rain shortened championship race or do you feel like the championship race uh, should be run to the finish even if you had to come back another day? 
Depends on where I'm at when the rain <laughs> comes. <laughs> um, I mean, it's South Florida. The, this, the weather changes so quick here that, that you have to be really careful not to put too much into the forecast. Um, I mean, I, I know my approach has always been, listen, when, when, when the track is dry and you take the green flag, you go and you race. And when the rain comes, you, you know, you can't predict it, you can't plan for it. Sure, you know, there, there's sometimes worth taking a little more risk. Like last weekend, for instance, at Phoenix, we were leading the race when the, when the caution came out. And we knew rain was coming at any second, but we were also going to run out of fuel. And, and so was that worth the risk? I mean, that, not that there was a championship on the line, but we were still thinking about it, thinking about the win, thinking about points. And, you know, those, those things will, will weigh out on, on Sunday if the weather comes. But right now I'm certainly not going to be worried and thinking about weather. I'm going to be thinking about getting on track Friday and seeing how we qualify. Hopefully the weather's good. Jordan Bianchi, SBNation.com. This is for all four of you. How informed do you want to be where the other three drivers are throughout the race? Is there a certain point where you want to know what you have to do, or do you just want to focus on getting the best finish possible and going for the win? Well, if you're in front of them, you'll know. And that's the only spot that matters. So, I mean, at that point, you, you're going to know as a driver where, where you're at with only three guys. Martin, you want to take that too? Yeah, I totally agree with Harvick. I mean, you're, you know, you feel like to win the championship, you're probably going to have to win this race. So, you know, if you're doing what you need to do, you're pretty much going to know where they're at. You know, I can see a lot of scenarios in my head where the four of us are, you know, running in the top five a lot of that race. So you'll know if you're ahead of them and that's where you'll want to be. All right, we'll go back here and then over to Jerry Jordan and then up here to Dwight. Zach Catan's very fun stretch in the back. Um, this is for all four of you guys. There's very, there's very distinct stories coming into this race. All four of you have a very distinct story. In your opinion, how does your story stack up against the other three? Well, I'm not even close so, to the story. I know for this one for sure and that one for sure. We'll just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's between those three. He's the favorite. We're the sentimentals. That's all, that's all there is. The way I see it, these three next to me are supposed to win the championship. And I'm probably not, so that's a pretty cool story in itself. I think it's just a, a great opportunity for, for myself to come back in this format and have the opportunity to race in the way that NASCAR presents the rules and the way the chase format is. So, um, you know, like Martin said, a lot of people would – would say that I don't deserve the chance or to be here, but um, you know what, we are, and uh, we're going to give it all we got just to go out there and have some fun and race against these guys. And I'm pretty sure, you know, to the previous question, it's it's going to be all four of us right around each other all all day long, and and we're going to know where each other are at, and we're going to know what we need to do in order to um, to win this championship. It's going to be most likely to win the race, so uh, you just got to put all those things in your mind and um, and, and just go out there and perform. All right, we'll go over to Jerry Jordan, to down here to Dwight, and then back to Pete Pistoni. Jerry Jordan kicking the tires. Uh, Martin, is it past time for people to stop looking at you as an underdog and realize that in a few hours you could be a champion and beat all these guys up here? I don't know. I think that, uh, you know, certainly you know, with my record in, in the Sprint Cup Series, you know, there's been a lot of ups and downs throughout my career. I've never really been uh, in a position like this before. So... You know, for a lot of reasons, and I've said it, you know, since the chase started, for a lot of reasons, we, we are the underdog. You know, the one-car team from Denver, um, you know, rookie crew chief. I've never raced for a championship in this series. So, for a lot, of, a lot of reasons, we are the underdog. But, you know, I think, again, what we've done this season has proved that we belong here. We've done it week in and week out. Um, you know, that, that we, you know, we can get the job done on any given day. And, and you know, this Sunday is no different than that. So we're going to just do our best and, uh, you know, go race hard and hope we put our best on the racetrack and, you know, feel like we're in a position to do something special. And, uh, you know, you never know when you're going to get this opportunity again. So we're really just, you know, 100% focused on what we're doing. We're not really worried about what people think, what people are saying. Um, we're just going out there to do our jobs the best of our ability. And, and that's what we've done all year. And hopefully that will uh, pay dividends in the end. 
We'll go to Dwight and then back to Pete Pistoni. Uh, DwightDrumRaceState.com. Uh, Martin, uh, about the, uh, oh, everybody, <laughs> about the, uh, the underdog status, uh, as far as when you put that helmet on, like everybody else up there when they put that helmet on, don't those things just kind of go away? They, they, yeah, they totally do. I mean, you don't think about anything on the, in the outside world when that helmet goes on other than what's about to happen in front of you on the racetrack. So um, it, it's real easy to focus, um, you know, for me, it, you know, on what we have to do and what it's going to take. It's going to, you know, it's definitely not going to be easy. You know, we have three great competitors here to race against this weekend. Um, but, you know, every other weekend we're racing against 42. So, you know, the odds are definitely a lot better this weekend than they've been the rest of the year. And, you know, again, if we can just uh, go out and do our job, it's, it's uh, you know, hopefully we'll be good enough to get it done. There's no telling right now, but uh, I'm excited about the opportunity. feel like we're going to have a really good shot at it. And uh, I'm looking forward to this weekend. It's going to be a lot of fun. There's really no pressure. It feels good to be here. It's, uh, this whole season has been just a ton of fun for me and, uh, and to see the progress of my race team. And um, hopefully we can uh, finish off the final chapter here. Okay, we'll go over to Pete, and then Don, if you could go in the middle here, and then over to the gentleman next to him, those two after Pete. Pete Pistoni, MRN.com, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. Jeff, there's a school of thought that because Kevin, Kyle, and Martin are going to have other opportunities to win championships, you have the most pressure of the four on Sunday. What's your reaction to that, and how much pressure do you feel in this race to the other 796 you've had in your career? Um, I mean, I, I look at it as more exciting. I mean, if I could have scripted this thing in January or February, uh, I don't think I could have scripted it quite the way it's going. Uh, you know, I, I never dreamed that uh, we could have an opportunity to, to be battling for the championship in my final race. Um, is there pressure? I mean, I feel like there's always pressure. Uh, you know, I'm, I think that more the more of the way I'm looking at it is just you know, going out in, a, in an awesome, fun way. And by winning that race in Martinsville and putting us in, you know, this elite group, um, I mean, that right there just, just was an incredible moment and something I'll never forget. And knowing that we were just going to come down here and, uh, and be a part of that four, that right there in itself is a win. But, uh, you know, if, if you don't think that our team is – working extremely hard and, and very focused and determined to be uh, a real factor in this thing on Sunday, um, then, then you're mistaken. And so that part certainly puts pressure on. I mean, I think, uh, yeah, there's a, a ton of pressure taken off all of us because we're just a part of it, and we know that we can't be worse than fourth when this thing's all over. But at the same time, there's definitely pressure because we all want it. We all want it really badly, and we all know that it's not going to come easily. And... You know, to me, that's, that's the same pressure that, that we have very often in big races and big events and big moments, you know, in certain points of the race. And I don't think that that really is any different. We'll go here, then to Kyle, and then back in the middle. Uh, Brian Mabes from Xfinity Racing. We took a fan question, and Chris asks, if you can't win, who would you be rooting for to win the title? Why don't we start here with your defending champion and work our way down the row? I don't think that's an approved question. They don't have an affiliation. <laughs> See, you guys are missing the whole goal. The whole goal is to not piss anybody off to the point where they just absolutely want to go home and you motivate them. So I think they're all great stories. <laughs> I'm going with Harvick. I'm saying I'm, I, I agree with Harvick. I'm not going that's with not, him that's as not the win. No, 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 no. That's not what you meant. I want all three of you guys to come across the line, you know, in a, in a, in a photo finish if I can't be in front of you. <laughs> uh, I'll go with my, uh, my childhood hero, Jeff Gordon. <laughs> I mean, this is a total setup. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> all right, we'll go here with Kyle and then back to the middle, and then uh, Kenny Bruce. Kyle Magda, Race Chase Online. I have two. I have one for Kyle, one for Jeff. Uh, Kyle, I know this weekend, uh, right now, you're entered in the uh, Xfinity race. Um, 
seeing that from your viewpoint, does that help you that you get more track time or does it hurt you in the sense that um, it serves more as a distraction with the championship here on the line? I think it. I think it is a distraction, and to me, it's always been sort of a, a good distraction. You know, to get your mind off of things a little bit, and you get to go out there, have some fun, and and um, you know, just try to focus on you know the other part you mentioned of just getting out there and getting some extra track time, and being able to have that opportunity to uh, race at Homestead. Obviously, it's been 360 whatever days since we've been here, so um, you know, to get out there and, and to to run the Xfinity race and to try to play with the lines and kind of see how all that goes. Uh, I feel like it's always a positive for me, so I look forward to that. And also the 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 way that you have to run this racetrack um, right up against the wall, within inches of the wall, it just fine tunes those things that you got to do for for Sunday and uh, being able to run up there like that and having the confidence to do that. So um, my crew chief would also probably tell you that it's a good thing that I get to go away for a while so he can work on the car and, and not have me putting things in his mind <laughs> that don't need to be there and, uh, and he can just make some smart adjustments. And for Jeff, speaking of going out on top, I know 15 years ago uh, you won the Bush race at Homestead Miami. That was your final start. Uh, could you just recall that day and maybe some similarities that you can draw to uh, come Sunday? Wow, you're making me uh, go back to the memory bank on that one. You got to understand that was a different racetrack. You know, that was a, a flat homestead, um, so there's not a whole lot you can take out of it. I don't know if I actually knew that was going to be my final Bush Grand National race, so there was not a lot, a lot of planning. Um, I was kind of hoping it was going to be my last one. <laughs> I was like, God, I got to do another one of these things. Uh, you know, we, we, we struggled for five races. We did, I think I did three seasons or two seasons, and we'd struggle for five of them and say, we should do another one, and then we'd win the last one. And so uh, there's no comparisons. It's, it's not even, even close. Uh, you know, our preparation, our thought process, um, the, the, you know, what was on the line, the planning, all that, you know, no, no, nowhere close other than – I hope the results are the same. All right, we're going to go here in the middle over to Kenny Bruce, NASCAR.com, and we will wrap it up with Nate Ryan, who will have the pressure of the final question. Hey, guys. Uh, Jeffrey Miller, Athlon Sports. Kevin, everybody's painting you as the favorite. So do you expect to win on Sunday? Are you the favorite? Well, I, I, there's just so many things that, that happen throughout these races. You know, I, I have the confidence in, in – my team and, and the things that we've done this year that I believe that, you know, our car will be competitive and, and, you know, but as we've proven, you know, throughout the chase, even though your car is competitive, there's a lot of things that can go wrong in our sport. Um, just, you know, whether it's mistakes from me or parts failures or, you know, whatever goes on. So in the end, we're going to try to control the things that, that we can control. Um, you know, I think our guys have, have kind of lived in this, you know, in this type of situation where, Everybody expects the car to, to go out and perform well, and, and I think you have to be very careful of how you, how you react to those things and how you balance those things and how you talk about those things. And, um, you know, it's, you're, you're confident in, in what you have, but you can't be confident in, in the results just for the fact that you just never know what can reach out and grab you. So we're going we're gonna to con control the things that we can control, and, and um, you know, hopefully, hopefully it goes well. Kenny Bruce with NASCAR.com. For each of you except for Kevin, because obviously, Kevin, you were in this situation last year, so you know what it's like. But have you guys ever been in a one race for all the marbles type situation before? I mean, I know you have the elimination races and you need to win to advance, but for the championship, as you came up, are, are there any similarities to races that you guys had to win? I was going to take it first because your memory makes a lot longer than ours. <laughs> you got to go back a few years. Um, I, I haven't actually, no. So this is, a, I guess, a first for me, but um, one that I'm looking forward to for, for sure. Um, what's funny is I just thought about it as we were sitting up here is my first uh, Xfinity Series, Bush Series championship that I was racing for uh, years ago was actually against Truex. So uh, we've been in that situation before, although it wasn't the last race that it came down to. So... Um, you know, I, I think that, um, you know, that could be said for something that, that, uh, some guys don't have that experience in that, but yet, um, you know, maybe not having that experience and, and taking a loss in one of those situations, um, you kind of don't really know what to expect. So you just let 
circumstances take care of themselves and uh, you don't focus on anything or don't think about anything. You just try to let your skill take over and, um, and take over it for the results in itself. Yeah, for me, I think the only thing I can really relate it to is uh, when, I, when I first got my big break to run in the Bush Series for, for Chance 2 back in 2003, and, and I knew that I was going to run one race for him. I didn't know if I was ever going to get any more, and that was kind of my big chance um, to make a career out of it. And, and it, it seems, you know, the, the similar feel, you know, just the pressure and the expectations and, you know, how's it going to go, and you're, you're just really thinking about it all in your mind. So that's really the only thing I can ever really relate it to. Uh, for me, I mean, if I go way, way back uh, to 97 when, when I battled with Mark Martin and Dale Jarrett, it came down to the final race at, at Atlanta between the three of us. But in that situation, I think we had a fairly decent lead. We had to finish 17th or better, and we ran 17th or 18th all day long. And so it was miserable, uh, but luckily we still pulled it off. I love this scenario far better where – you know, you're on even points. You got to perform at a high level and just go out there to win the race. And and you know that there's a good chance you're going to have to win the race. Um, then the only other one I can compare to is w whatever your Kurt won it. I think it was '04 um, when me, Kurt, and Jimmy were here at Homestead, um, all with a chance at winning it. Kurt had the lead. It wasn't even, but uh, we all raced our guts out. Knew we had to basically race for the win. Um, and I remember that, that final restart, I was second, I think, to Biffle. Uh, and then Jimmy was third. And I tried to go for the win and end up not getting by Biffle. And Jimmy got by me. And we, neither one of us won the championship, but he passed me in points. And he finished second, I finished third. But, you know, just that, that mentality of knowing how hard you had to push to, to, to have a shot at winning that championship, was that would be the only comparison I had. Uh, Nate Ryan, NBC Sports. Kevin, a few of us were struck by you saying that the goal was not to piss anybody off because it seems like that's been your goal at many of these events in the past. So um, some of us are also struck by the, the affable collegiality up here. Why no mind games today for many of you guys? Do you guys all just like each other too much? Or, you know, what's the deal? Usually we're used to people needling each other and taking shots. Well, I, I think it's his fault. We're going to blame it on him. You know, it, it's, it's just... It's a little bit different, I, I think, just for the fact that um, I know we all want to win. We all want to have a championship. But in the end, you don't want to be the guy that was disrespectful at Jeff Gordon's last press conference or say something that is just a total jackass move. You know, so, God, I um, hope he's thinking like that on Sunday, too. <laughs> it's Thursday, Jeff. It's Thursday. But I don't know. You know, I, I, um, I, yeah, I just don't think it's – I think there's a lot of respect for where everybody's at, and, and I think when you look at you look at Martin and everything that those guys have done with with what they've got in, in Colorado, and, and you you know here they are, and you look at Kyle breaking his leg and, and fighting back. I mean, it's just and you have Jeff who's going to retire and run the last race. I mean, there's there's really no reason to create a story. There's no reason to create a moment if you guys can't find something to write about on this stage. Y'all need to be fired. <laughs> So make some good stories and make sure there's enough people watching. We're dependent on you. All right. We'll end on that note with the defending champions. So that concludes our formal uh, question and answer portion. Uh, we'll now have the breakout sessions with each of our championship four drivers, followed by the four uh, championship car owners as well. Um, thank you very much. I hope you get a lot out of the day. Have a good afternoon. <laughs>